Right now, we're using Map Marker to place locations into our map view, but it creates this fairly uninteresting balloon shape by default. So add one here, you get a balloon and it's not interactive. There's no title there, there's no description, nothing, just a little balloon pin thing happening here. Helpfully, SwiftUI lets us place completely custom map annotations in here, showing any kind of SwiftUI view we want. And so we're gonna use this to show a custom view containing a nice big icon, plus the location's name below so it's clear what it all represents. And when that's done, we'll have a look at the underlying type here, our location struct, to look for ways that can be improved. So, step one, let's go ahead and change map marker to be a map annotation. And this wants to be given a second parameter, this thing here, with your SwiftUI code inside. What do you want to show here? In our case, I'll say I want a V stack and then an image with system name of star.circle, which is resizable, has a foreground color of red, a frame width of 44, height 44, background of white, and then clip shape of circle. And below that we'll do text location.name. And that's our custom SwiftUI view. Now, I want to point out just briefly, if you aren't familiar with this, the width 44, height 44, that thing there matters. That is Apple's magic number, 44 times 44 in size. That is a recommended minimum size for any interactive thing inside your code. Don't go smaller than that. And that's actually quite a big size on the screen. But keep in mind, you get some very small iPhones, but also iPad mini. which has a full iPad screen res, just a smaller package. And so... That gets scaled down to like 32 or something like that around then. Not a lot of space. So I'll give it 44 by 44 as the absolute minimum for any interactive elements in your UI. Anyway, that's already a huge improvement. Like go ahead and run the code now and you're like, wow, that's, that's much better. Um, so I can go over here to, uh, so we're in Birmingham, and press add, and get boom, there's our location. And then let's go over here somewhere in France, like uh, right near the border, uh, where I think it's Barst is around here somewhere. Uh, let's put it there, for example. Oops, I've zoomed in slightly, sorry. And that's more obvious when I'm wrong. Um, I'll say it's about there. Um, add, there we go. Uh, it's a big icon, I'll cover it up. Anyway, it's already a big improvement because you can see uh, exactly where locations are. Now I'm curious, how close was I? Was I miles out? There's Mets. Oh, anyway, sorry, ignore me for a second. <laughs> I'm just curious how bad my uh, geography is. Anyway, sorry, distractions. Um, yes, maps. That's done, we're done, that's, that's all it took. Honestly, it was really, really easy to do to add these custom annotations because um, iOS makes it so easy, right? So UI makes it really easy. So while we're here, let's not stop. Let's carry on and have a look at our location struct, which stores our individual map annotation locations on the map. Um, I wanna see if we can enhance this in a few little ways, small ways that make it more useful and more better all around. First, I don't particularly like having this kind of code here, having to write CL location coordinate 2D, latitude blah, longitude blah, again and again and again in our SwiftUI views. And we have to do it right now because uh, we can't store a CL location coordinate 2D in our location struct because it doesn't conform to the codable protocol. And it'll cause problems. So we're keeping the synthesized codable, which is great, but we can't have our location coordinate in there. And so, a nice workaround is to move this into the location struct as a computed property. So it won't be stored by codable. It'll be calculated like on demand like it's doing right now. And so I'll just take that out and put it into location and say that we have var coordinate is a CL location coordinate 2D, a long, long name, uh, and then just paste that in there. Paste in my latitude and my longitude Done. And that can now be used in place of having to make the coordinate every single time by hand. It's much nicer, I think. Our coordinate here is now just location.coordinate, which is much nicer. The second change we're going to make is one I encourage everyone to make when they're building custom data types for use with Swift, SwiftUI, or whatever. Um, add an example. Add some example data. It's so important with previewing in SwiftUI. It makes it much, much easier. Um, and it's as simple as adding a static 
property to your struct called example, they can be previewed well. So it's an example they to work with. And so I'll say that our location has an example, location here with ID, UUID, doesn't matter. Name, I'll add Buckingham Palace. Description, uh, where Queen Elizabeth lives with her doggies. And by the way, fun fact for you, um, folks think she has corgis, she has doggies. They're dachshund corgi mixes. Come for swift, stay for fascinating British royalty facts. <laughs> Maybe. Um, latitude, 51.501, of course, and longitude, minus 0 0.141. Boom. An example makes previewing so much easier. I would use it for all my types. Honestly, it's amazing. The last change I want to make is to add a custom equals equals function to the struct here. Now, we already made this thing conform to the equatable protocol, which means we can already compare two locations. We can say A is equal to B equals equals B. And behind the scenes, that works because Swift will synthesize an equals equals function for us by comparing every property from left and right. Is ID the same? Yes. Is name the same? Yes. Description the same? Latitude, longitude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they're the same. Um, now in this case, it's actually quite wasteful because we've given our locations a universally unique identifier. If they are the same, I don't care what the rest of the values are. The ID is the same, the location is the same. It's supposed to be unique. If it isn't unique, we've got problems because we're promising Swift UI is unique, that's identifiable cause right there. Uh, and so if it is definitely unique, brilliant. Don't compare name and description and latitude, longitude, da, 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 just compare ID. And so we can save a bunch of work in our code by adding that by hand down here. We'll say static func equals equals, left hand side location, right hand side location returns a bool. And let's do LHS ID is equal to RHS.ID. A much faster comparison than comparing two extra strings plus two more doubles. Uh, and so it's a really good idea to have that when you have this identifiable protocol as well. Now, I am genuinely a huge fan of making structs conform to equatable as standard. Even if you haven't got the time or the need to make a customized, optimized version like this, structs are simple values like strings and integers and so forth. And I believe we should extend that same status to our own bigger structs that combine strings and doubles and more. Come on then, you be hungry. With that in place though, the next stage of our project is complete. Apparently, Feed the Dogs comes first though. Come on, quick shout. One, come on, come on. Dear me. The next phase of our project is complete. Hopefully you can now drop a marker, see our custom annotation and marvel in that. And yeah, it looks the same, but now you can at least marvel that now behind the scenes, our code's a little bit nicer, a little bit neater, a little bit faster. Just better all around. And of course, my dog's got a treat because they're just very, very hungry dogs. Isn't that right?